Jeremiah Kioni is the Secretary General of Jubilee Party. He's our guest this morning. Morning, Mwishimiwa. Uh, morning, morning, Alik. Karibu sana to Kenya's biggest conversation again. Asante, uh, tunashukuru. How are things going in Nairobi and Daragua? Uh, Nairobi more because Daragua kuna enyewe. Unajua ukinyi mwakula. Yeah. Uzianze kumangamanga kwa enyewe. Unahama. <laughs> Unaodokea wegini wafanya kazi. <laughs> so, but all is well. I was there yesterday. Mm. Um, it's dry. We expected it to be a little wet. So, mm. not looking very well. Good for those who are expecting uh, clubs from some harvest. Uwoga mm. uh, iko mingi. Naona watu wamekawa wanastuka kila mtu sijui ni nini. I don't know whether you've seen people. Uh, by the roadside when a major road accident have, have has occurred what wana kaga na mna ikado ya barabara mm. they talk in whispers mm. that's what i saw in daragua yesterday i saw it in laikipia because i went there so they see you they do that and uh, not quite me but uh, uh, maybe if, if that is me they are seeing then i i must also confess that i could be part of the problem but mm. uh, that's the kind of situation i i witnessed there but anyway, i went all the way to like i went to look for my najenga at his house also jana mm. um nikakuta pia huko even the ladies were so scared they hear motor vehicle and they want to dash under the trees um that could be now me because i was the one with the vehicle so mm. um that is uh, something perhaps outside what you're asking for but what wako sawa aina fulani ile sawa unasema iko sawa kwa sababu salamu zetu za kiafrika ni kwamba mtu akisema how are you unasema niko mzuri even when things are really mm. tough but bottom line kenya is hurting things are tough people everybody is agreeing things are very very tough let's talk about that shortly. even as you are asking me by the way i should also say that early that mm. uh my going to those places yesterday was again undercover because i could not allow my phones were off uh for the reason that uh, uh, we also have uh, another recent phenomena in our uh, on our roads um, and they are called subarus mm. So like now I have seen a Subaru uh, parked out there when I was uh, coming in I, a white one nikauliza dereva ni kama wanajua sema ni mtu tu amekuja ni wa hapa pengine sema mm. sure so you can never know whether it belongs here or it belongs to others but it belongs to uh, the Kenyan lords mm. what it is doing could be very different from be, what you think be different from what you know what you know so I was uh, I and I tell you not uh, as a joyful person but that is this, what we have been doing for the last uh, more than now two months uh, I, s- I, s- <sighs> i haven't used these phones from wednesday until um, when is the last week when is the thursday friday saturday sunday i started using these things on saturday when i said buy and buy this is to avoid being tracked yeah because uh, the data protection the data that is available everywhere is being used uh, for all manner of reasons including tracking us mm. and chasing us around that's the country we are in where nine months ah yeah city mm. the day is proverb yes tom zuri <laughs> oh no this is a beautiful one <laughs> if the palm mm-hmm. of the hand itches it signifies the coming of great luck wow that we have it in our own language also if you <laughs> if you if you do this yeah. somebody says you are likely to have money nice. uh, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing that manifests good luck like money yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and a lot of it yeah. that's a lot of good luck mm. yes. palm of your hand reaches mm. yeah. would you mm. good luck is yeah. coming but it's not each for a while it's good to say <laughs> it is coming <laughs> It has an each it has an each for a while by mm. the way it is coming <laughs> yeah. the each will come mm. this proverb is from lesotho yes it is all right mm. so mushimiwa these things that you're saying that have been happening in the country yes over the last uh, couple of months mm. of, co- of course you as the leadership of azimio have been calling and organizing the demonstrations last week you organized the three days of demonstration the previous week was a day and you've been calling them regularly and the government then has also said no 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 we need to make sure that these demonstrations are peaceful they don't lead to anarchy so you're saying that now you are living in fear mm. for the reason that we have article 37 of our constitution mm. 
that we had gotten used to uh, reading and thinking that uh, the happening of it is a kawaida thing mm. that if you want to say no to something nobody will come hunting you down or even uh, putting you behind behind crossed bars mm. uh, planting bangi on you uh, or even firearms on you by the way for those who are uh, younger and perhaps uh, new in our country um i didn't say anything to <laughs> to do <laughs> to do but um uh, this is what happened to happen it used to happen in 1980s mm. 88 in the, in the 80s and 90s yes because we had um we had the special branch then and then we had something called mwa kenya mm. and uh, what would happen is that the special branch would hunt you down if they but, and uh, they would call anything any conversation discussion seditious and this studio by the way by the definition of the 80s and 90s is a seditious uh, studio because mm. what i'm saying you could not say it then mm. uh, and it uh, unfortunately we seem to be heading uh, there what, what i'm saying is that uh, article that 7 uh, guarantees us that room to if you are unhappy go out in the streets and say you are unhappy mm. come outside the doors of uh, uh, standard media and say that you have not treated us well and we see it in other developed worlds when you were going around the world looking for uh, the constitution that we wanted i remember we went to brazil mm. and outside parliament they have a picketing corner and there are police officers there if you have an issue that you want to tell the members of parliament you go there with your sufuria and you bang it throughout the day It's as expected. they walk in yeah. and they walk out mm -hmm. they hear you and remember of your issue mm -hmm. and they should go in and legislate mm -hmm. they should not just ignore you in that place has even police officers who help you and make sure that you are actually safe mm -hmm. nobody should stop you from doing it mm -hmm. so there are examples all over the world if you go to france this picketing and uh, whatever they do it 24 hours forget mm. about here when we say it is this to 6 to 6 them they doing around the clock and the work of the police officers is to ensure that uh, there is peace uh, that is maintained because mm. when there is a lot uh, uh, group of that nature you should be looking out to ensure that uh, everything happens in peace but what have we seen what have we seen i mean intolerance to beyond mm the shooting of dennis here at morongo down the road three kilometers from where we are mm. is what brought the, the the chaos that you saw at morongo mm. a young man called dennis mm. shot dead who said why did you shoot the young man who was shot at uh, mali mm. heading to the university to do ict and help the mother she, he had promised the mother i will buy you a plot and i'll put up a house mm. single mother mm. the young man walking with the mother to say just to walk out of the com and pop dead kisumu the chief points a guy called dennis at who you do an ongoza maandamano he is shot dead mm. when people are seeing what do you expect people to do how do you expect kenyans to react it will be the same i mean it's common sense you yeah. can jump go to the top of the roof of any house and say it is azimio causing the violence mm. But wait until a child is shot dead in your own outside your own compound or like outside your own area. And the same thing is happening. And it is happening all over. Look at what they were doing two days ago. Removing people from houses and crowbarring them. Those who are not people demonstrating. The fact that you may have been part of demonstration two days ago does not allow any police officer to come to your house. We narugu and crowbar you. What happens though what is this this that, is that's a, causing this all this really things? a collapse it's a, actually we are living in a situation where the the people in the regime have mm. suspended the constitution you are given a bail and you are not released you are now you start being just taken from one police station to the other mm. an order is given in court for habeas corpus produce the body of jenga minor jenga and he's not produced mm. they, they still hold him This guy member of parliament for Ibakasi Babu is released and he arrested within the judiciary. Right you know something that was not happening for the last 20 years. It has not This happened before. This is what ha used to happen during uh, the Kanu regime. Mwashimua. You would be arrested within the courts. Hmm. We did away with that kind of thing. So even the judiciary has caved in. Nobody has said a word. Ndu. 
you see people going to they were in court last week looking for their family members i want to ask him do a question what's that thing that they say in french mm. Qu'est-ce plus change plus change plus, plus change chose, plus ça change plus la même chose mm. 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 Now, 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 the more things change the more they remain they the look same, the same. Mm. The more things change, the more they remain I'm the sorry, same. I'm almost tempted to go to my French also. When I go to Oku. And Kubaya. Nikuru. Nikubaya. Nikubaya. When no, we say that things have changed. But I mean, Shimua, I'm yes. a, because you've said all those examples that you've, you've given, they sound like deja vu. Like we've been here before. Not long ago. Not 20 years. Not the 80s and, and the early 90s, as you say but two three years ago months ago and that's why i'm asking what's happening to the state is it those who are the state the same we're just changing things we took it for granted remaining the same we when malala senator malala senator lelegue senator langatu are being arrested in the middle of the night and being transported from kitengela to kakamega in the middle of the night and those who are in government now are complaining those who are in government then like yourselves had a reason and no. you could explain it away i didn't at least we didn't hear condemnation uh, well i didn't condemn i must condemn I when must miguna say, miguna miguna I was being done the same mm. and being you know held in communicado habeas corpus no matter court order after court order and miguna miguna not and being, being manhandled out of the country being it was not right then the country. it is not right now so it things was have not, not changed let, right things had changed let me tell you At least then maybe the people who were in power had the fear of the constitution they had help in making and supported. Today we have people in power who actually said no to this constitution. So they are doing those things with the with the feeling that this is how things may have should have been from the beginning. I mean during all that time at least we never had somebody plant bangi we never saw vehicles calling uh, Sudanese number plates being used to chase you down. But I'm saying, I'm not saying it was light then. It wasn't even then. Mm. It is not right now. This is not the country we want to be in. Mm. The difficulties that we are going through are not likely to go by just change of government. We want people to ensure that any government that comes to power is kept on check. That was the essence of the, of this the, constitution. the, the, the rights, the, free, the, the rights that we have in our constitution. Mm. Well, Shimo, you've cited because, several examples, if I yes. could just come, you've cited several examples of things that have been going on over the last few days, weeks, right? Um, this is all coming from somewhere. It's not, it's not in a vacuum. It's not out of a whirlwind. What has made these things happen? I'm not asking for a justification of the action. I'm asking for the reason behind why we've seen the proliferation of these things. One your of, understanding. One of the things is that our members of parliament have dropped the guard. Why we have three arms of government is so that there, there is that balance of balance and checks. It is parliament that should have been able to come strong and tell the executive hold it that is beyond we are not going to pass this budget we are going to file motion of impeachment the tools of checking an excessive executive exist and are available to parliament mm. parliament abandoned us from day one i have come here counting the number of members of parliament from the legion i come from who participating participated in bad mouthing the former head of state when he was in power oh and who are now participating in the activities that we have seen including the stealing of goats mm. that happened at uh, northrads and including the harassing of our grandmother our mother to some of us that started five years ago six years ago now it has continued they are in office now they are abating it they are i have counted there are 66 of them all these are people from mount kenya because the hell of where we are started in Mount Kenya. Mm. It was picked as an easy point. Nayo Nyungu ikategnezoa Mount Kenya. It is now being served to all Kenyans. Mushima, I'm sorry. I have to ask. And it is a very painful thing. I need to. He is super Nyungu. I can see it's paining you also. Let me hear. <laughs> I have to ask again. Yes, mm. 
we have seen certain things, the arrest of people, the shooting of others, the deaths of others. Are you telling me that the inaction of members of parliament has a direct correlation to the things that we have seen happening on the streets? That because members of parliament passed a budget, which as you've said, is going to then hamper the lives of Kenyans negatively. That is why we see the violence and action on the streets, the deaths of people, the arrests of others, the, you know, re-arrests of others. Can, is, is there a line that we can draw between the two? Or is there something else that has happened? And it made between me... the passing of the budget yes. and these other things that we are seeing. What happened in the middle here that would catalyze this action? And it made me here also to uh, add the, 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 the lack of fear of the judiciary. The thinking that you're in bed with the judiciary, that whatever you do, at Ukieda Mahakamani, we will play around with it. We, we saw a magistrate do what used to be done under the Kanu regime. You are taken to court, you are arrested within the corridors, no word. Police officers are allowed into the judiciary. While we already know that the judiciary has a roster of police officers who are assigned to them. Others cannot come and do anything within without that. So it's not just that. I'm just, just uh, throwing in the issue of the... Because now sure. the, the final call is in the courts. One magistrate said when uh, Azimio people are being arrested, sometimes we can say, and stop bringing this young people here before us for no good reason. He actually told, cautioned the police officers. That was the very initial time. Yes, he said, Stop using the courts to harass these people. That seems now to have left the stage and a set of officers are being, uh, now uh, magistrates are being affiliated for this system. Like it was, there was an, a magistrate who was waiting for somebody to be arrested in Kiabu even after the hours. That is something we did away with the constitution. But going back, Ariro, to what you have said, it's good to be honest about this. The difficult in the cost of living started a while ago. But this is the six members of parliament. What did they do? Instead of agreeing to say, yes, there is a problem. Hmm. When COVID comes, it hits you and it hits everybody else. We need to readjust as a country. They said, uh uh, it's not COVID. Nihuyu, Marisa Wende. She done where you cook office, Marisa Wende. We see the Ukraine war, the Russian thing is going to hit the whole world. Why don't we th think of how we to approach this? He said, Panapana, Ni Marisa Wende. Nakia Mugui, Bibilia, Nikweka Chini, Unga in Akuja Chini. So, what did you do to Kenyans? And this I was told yesterday by people from like Ipia and Yandaro. Because I told them, Ikitu, Iki Nawaramba, Murijiretea nyinyi wenyewe. A young man told me, and I actually own up, I sympathize. He said, lakini mweshumu wa tuseme ukweli. Yare mambo abayo tuliahidiwa itafanyika. It was impossible to resist. Mm. So we were lied to, and we had to believe there were such nice things for a, servo, a person who is suffering. So as leaders, when you become dishonest, you give false promises mm. in a desperate situation like we are in in this country. You must take the responsibility. But are you those in the regime today before you I finish, are a leader. must take a responsibility. Yeah. And I before I do this, let me also say this because I might forget. Mm. It is not a question of if, it's a question of when. When? Do I get another opportunity to vote? And I'll throw all these people home. So we are, so we are it's back not to a question of, it's not, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's not a question of um, if. It's a question of when. And they are certain of one thing. I want to ask That it you. is coming 1927. Is it 1927 or 2027? 2027. 2027. <laughs> 2027. But they are saying. If it can come sooner. If it, there is a way of it coming earlier. We will do what is expected of us So now. we are in the same cycle of Marisa Wende. Which is, uh, I don't want to say Marisa Wende. That cycle yeah, of Marisa. Your cycle is Marisa Wende. This Hii one is. Kusema, urikuja hapa kwa makosa. And a sai ato si Marisa. Urikuja na makosa. So we are in the same one. Mm. If you are the same people who were telling us two years ago, the war on Ukraine, the global oil prices, and the global challenges, economic challenges are a cause for 
this situation that we are in but you are not willing to accept it the same to continue the same story today those who were in the opposition then saying we do not want to hear anything about the war in ukraine and now they are telling us about the war in ukraine we have just switched sides they it's went, the same as no man you no, no, game no. or you've just you've gone into there's second a half there's a you're just scoring on the other side and they're scoring the other side there is a difference what is the difference they have gone on? beyond what had we done we had brought in subsidies which when before the elections you we had brought subsidies. subsidies two weeks to the elections even before for example like the issue of electricity was way way before the issue of the 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 the, the unga subsidy which the the electricity subsidy, subsidy. The 15%. and even before the 15 percent it is there by the way the subsidy on electricity started even with kibaki you need to understand how it is that we ended up with the rural rectification program okay how is it that we are subsidizing the infrastructural uh, costs it was to deal with these things did we see and a that, rise in the cost of power sorry in the jubilee administration yes but not to the level that we are in today well it got to a bad level such that the president had to appoint a special team to look into the causes of the rising cost of power yes. we need the same thing done that is why you are in government you are not there to go and rubber rubber mm. but has that report na serikali yes serikali kazi ya serikali sio kurubber rubber sio sukali sio sukali hapana it is hard work <laughs> and it does not need you to be on top of vehicles permanently like now i've seen people they are not one year in office na na wana huko wamekalia magari vinga my question again before instead of sitting behind their again. desk and <laughs> giving us solutions we need to do the you break. are not allowing me to finish are you could ruzu ni malize are you taking that responsibility as leaders today for your own utterances last year you who are now in opposition what but you were say? firmly in government then mm. and those who are now in government and were firmly in opposition then cost of living is the war in ukraine affecting our cost of living today or no, is it not me i believe it but you say you told me i'm uh, stupid stop lying to kenyans uh -huh. covid has nothing to do with this you are the one who said it but today so why are saying? you recruiting me into your problem sort to, them out now today, you have why are you wearing a sufuria jeremiah because the sufuria is empty why is and it, it is not just empty today if you are laid off the loan that you are paying you will be will be recorded today where we, middle class but you told us goja kidogo wacheni kupayuka na kubweka bweka yes bei ya unga imepanda sababu ya ukraine yes now you are wearing a sufuria and you are bweka bweka ring about the same bei ya unga na kata kwanza ni kweli imepanda na wao walisaidia lakini wewe kwa sababu ni mjeuri ukasema sisi ni wajinga now even instead of sorting out the problem now you have come for my goats instead of sorting the problem now you have come to plant a bangi in my house instead of sorting the problems now you are now going for uhuru sideward by this is the six kikuyus who messed this country mm. now what what i done you ban e what they to gagas they must go home <laughs> but let me say what i'm what i'm saying this say. is we gave subsidies they may not have worked or they may not have brought the cost of living down mm -hmm. but we cautioned it they have they came and removed all of them we were removing the payment of school fees because these are the things you do to a school fees kwa wazazi wachia wasubwana na chakula wacha wazazi watoto wakae shule zaidi siku hizi ni watoto wakae nyumbani zaidi na mzazi alipe school fees help with the cash transfer the budget imekuja chini this is how you intervene and i'm telling you instead of that finance bill this was the icing on the cake they bring a, a, a finance bill ambayo ina, ina, inatoa uchuru kwa mama wa chama na ule mama wa boda boda na ule mama wa mama boga I, yo, that's where you we can't connect and even before we do anything else that finance bill must be removed from the table it actually shows how contemptuous you are to kenyans there's a very simple fact about life and that is how it is the things we add and the things we do set in motion things that we sometimes do not and cannot see the end of. It may even seem innocuous. Two things that I'm going to mention. One, the inability that we've had as Kenyans to speak truth to power when you are in that power sharing group. If Azimio is in power and you're in Azimio, you cannot say we are doing wrong and say publicly this is wrong. In the previous government of Uhuru's, 
the one thing, there are, there are things that people mentioned, but the thing that stuck was that government's capacity to ignore court rulings and completely disregard court rulings. The court says this, they simply, it's like the court is talking to itself. Now, it may appear innocuous, but it sets things in motion. And we are seeing the culmination of it. Now, we have a government that you're now arguing is doing the same thing and going beyond. You see, this is now an outcome. The opportunity to do right when it is missed, the consequences that will follow are often beyond our control. There's a point at which you could have controlled it and set that path. I think of the problems we had in the Rift Valley with what we are calling now the tribal clashes. Are not, those things are not tribal clashes. The, and then there was nothing spontaneous about it. Those things were planned. That is my view. Mm. And that they happened before they actually stopped in the first place. And we had the intelligence, we had the security. We, we, it's something that baffles me to date. How so many Kenyans could lose their lives and yet all the security apparatus were in place. It's something that I find puzzling. Now, everything that we've dealt with, President, the former President Uhuru made an attempt that I found admirable. He apologized for 2008, apologized for the Wagala massacre. He at least attempted and came out and spoke out about it. Now, if we have history, a history of things that have happened in this country that have never really been dealt with, have never been sorted out, they don't go away. They're always lurking somewhere in the background. And they rear their heads in ways. We talked about the dungeons, the Nyan House dungeons of the Moi era. Did, did we ever have a truth and reconciliation moment where Kenyans came and talked about these things openly? Mm. I know people who are, who are compensated. I know them personally because some of them, I was in college with them, I was in university with them. But have we ever had an honest conversation? No, we haven't. Have we ever had a, an honest conversation about what happened in 2007, 2008? No, we haven't. So now, we are heaping this burden on yet another one. Yes, Ukraine happened and all that happened. We understand all that. But what we're dealing with now has nothing to do with Ukraine. Uh, it, it has nothing to do with the price of oil. It has nothing to do with COVID. It has to do with what we are coming out into the open. Now, we have a moment where we can do the right thing and change and even have honest conversations about what is actually happening. If I was a young man in those 80s and those 90s and everything that is happening for me, as you say correctly, it's deja vu. I, I'm looking, I'm saying, my, do you mean to tell me we've gone back to those horribly terrible days when one moment you have a friend, you know, people used to disappear in college. I mean, one moment yeah. you're with someone and they go to sleep, the next moment they are not there. Mm. It, 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 it wasn't a pleasant thing. And we are saying we are back there again. But it, it didn't start with this one. It started earlier with things that could have been dealt with for the government to feel that they are in a position to do exactly what they want the way they want it. There has to be a platform from which they are functioning. There is something that makes them believe they can do that. So you're saying that the, there's been no attempt at all to change? We have... Um, token. We, we have token, yes. We have, um, we have been looking for peace at the expense of everything else. Mm -hmm. And I think we are now at a point of saying justice before peace. Justice before peace. Because, for example, and I want to say, for if we don't sort out mm -hmm. the electoral justice system, you will never sort out these issues. Any system that eventually produces a leader who can get to that point without any moral grounding, mm. to me, is one of the reasons why we are where we are. And I want to agree uh, uh, with what you have said. It is true that every time we try to resolve issues, we've never agreed to resolve all of them. Why? Because sometimes those who are helping us or leading that process of resolving those issues will be sorted out by the final correct solution. Yeah. So you don't allow that final correct solution, you allow a bit of it so that it can also uh, keep you going for a while. When we were dealing with our 2010 constitution, 
I remember we said if you ever face criminals uh, against human rights or if you, you are facing crimes, on, what did you say? Against humanity. Against humanity. Yes. You should never hold power. Yes. Then it comes and you say, uh -uh, but these two guys, if we, don't, if we are not careful, they will be jailed. Mm. The country will die. So can we first of all sort out and look at, therefore, today, where are we? We are now back to crimes against humanity. What has happened in the last one, two weeks in this country is pure and simple genocide. It's massacre. And I want to say here, I also belong to the, to the hashtag, rules are Kenyans, stop massacring the rules. That has happened in the last three days. We in Azimio saw it coming in Sodu. When instead of what we are seeing, people chasing around one another with stones, young people came out with bows and arrows and ambushed the other community, which was completely got off guard. And we said, this is another 207 in the making. Why is it happening? Because when it happened, what happened to those who caused it? Nothing. They still got away with it. And I agree, like we have said, and I have continued saying this from the, uh, the point of Azimio, mm. We may have, and I want to still go out here because the amount of fear that is in Mount Kenya, in fact, the region that is holding us from this constitutional movement now is Mount Kenya. Fear of what? The fear I saw yesterday in their eyes, mm. in their postures, is unbelievable. What fear, fear of what? what? What are they and afraid what of? what are they saying? Mm. They also never thought that people can start being arrested. The Again. people are being arrested. They never thought that somebody can hide a police officer in plain clothes, can hide and shoot somebody just because you are, that fear has gripped, including those hardcore guys. And this is exactly what happened in the 80s. You start by instilling fear. Has the same fear. Then uh, take over. Has the, the issue same of, fear. The issue of, uh, take over. The issue of dictating to people and tell them what to do. Has the same And I want to say fear. this. I know what you want to ask before you, <laughs> you ask. Let me say this. Uh. I want to give credit to something that was bad mouthed by these 66 members of parliament, among others. But they were the ones who took the lead. You remember Kitaereka? The other one was Tanga Tanga. Yeah. That whole Tanga Tanga team is the one responsible for where we are. Mm. This issue of hardship, we can say yes, it is slowed down the opposition. Mm. But I want to tell you, it, in the BBI, we had a lot of solutions to the issues that we are now suffering from today. If we had the BBI on the table, nobody would have said this is a company limited by chairs. Others are guests. If we had that BBI today, we would not be having the kids. I was seated yesterday. By the way, if you look at the, uh, you may not have seen, but I went to demonstrate something about the issue of school fees in the church I was in yesterday in Mount Kenya. Mm. And there was a child who was up to perhaps uh, mid in terms of height, mm. Nusuyangu. Mm -hmm. I picked the child. Mm -hmm. What horrified me is I had no struggle lifting the child above my head. Mm -hmm. And I ni kama karatasi. What does that tell you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Not hungry. Mm -hmm. Hungry, not fed. The mother may not be able to say it that way. But to me as a leader, I live very worried. Because you can tell, hata huyu akipere kwa chule, Mm. So all these mm. problems, I was saying this. I have to so ask the you. issue of hardship was to help ameliorate some of these issues because the difficulties that we are in as a country are difficulties that we must face them, all of us, together. You ask about fear. You said you talked about fear and that the people who are afraid of going back to an era that was, you know, turmoil for them. And there's also the talk of getting back to a place whereby these things don't happen. Is this perhaps the same kind of fear that would grip a man like Uhuru Kenyatta? That is dangerous. It's not fear that is coming. 
if they continue and i want to be uh, i want to say it here if they continue this thing about uhuru kenyatta they are going to see the things they've never seen from some of us huh? what does that mean you cannot do what you are doing to him we never did that to moi or kibaki you cannot go and harass mama again a 90 year old woman you cannot tell us like they have told us that they are going to have a day to go and uh, defecate outside ichaweri and i want to know the day so that we can also go and counter it wale wamesema wanaenda kukojoa how would you counter the fucking we, we, we will counter it because we are saying we will not go with our pants down does this not perpetuate <laughs> sorry so i am Shinoa, saying i am agreeing not, with you I, sure but i'm agreeing with you i'm telling you the not, direction this regime has taken is not to help over to this country does it not perpetuate the same situation that you're saying must be avoided does it not perpetuate the things that you have just said which is that if they are going to continue we're going fire. to counter and they will see things that they've never seen before lakini wewe jamani hata kusema ukweli hata bibiria inasema utakuja kukata kichwa yangu na nisiweke mkono it says that revenge is the lord the same bible not revenge it's self defense mheshimiwa it's not revenge it's self defense mheshimiwa where were you in 1992 92 nilikuwa hapa when they hit matiba and matiba by the way you know what matiba said that 1992 moi must go aliposema hivyo very few of us could re, could uh, uh, repeat the same phrase mm. but before that how long had they taken us for somebody to say moi must go more than 10 years it did not it has not taken us 8 months to say ruto must go how long did they take us to get moi out after that another 10 years it's not going to take us 10 years fortunately we have the constitution Mwishima. but also we have we have the constitution moi, in two moi left if you ask me he left he finished his term yes and he left other presidents on this continent changed constitutions so that they could remain there for life he didn't he was a president one could have argued that he could have but, but before you know that, I took it before to 92 that, eh? remember 1992 yes. he was a president for life until we brought in cross uh, uh, yes. yes so we actually forced section 2a, him. Section yes. 2A. Yes. we cut his uh, presidents for life you see The point is a valid one. Mm. You can also cut five. The years. reason why I brought 92 mm. was because mm. remember the period before mm. then these Brenton Woods institutions who are now giving us money as though it's confetti. In those days they aligned giving you money with good behavior. You have to behave well. Ah, yes. Uh, you remember that one? Thank you. Now, you know these things that we're dealing with now, these high costs. Brenton Woods are the ones who brought it then now they've brought it here again why are we not having this conversation that we have a president who doesn't really have much of a choice about these things those guys come with rules you must raise this you must raise this you must raise this they come with those rules yes please <laughs> hard check words of uhuru one of the things that why we needed hard check is to ensure that this country is not taken back to 1992 all those institutions were in kenya trying to force hard towards where we are we needed to come together as a country and tell them ah ah tuko na shida lakini hii dawa and he said this and I'm, some of these things are privileged information and you not be talking about them but it is important to talk about them and that is why i would forever respect raira he said it in his own heart. and we are not looking by the way when we when i talk about hard check mm. Because there are some idiots out there who will be running around saying that we are looking for hardships. We are not looking for hardship in mm. this one. And I'll tell you why. Raila himself said, why I agreed to work with Uhuru is because he was able to put all these things before me where the country was going. And he also said, I cannot manage this country without you. The reality of this country is, <laughs> where the Ruke Chini Jedani Amaji Utoke, <laughs> in Kenya, iko marabiri. Na for now today Raila Amolo Odinga hapa amesimamia Kenya ya marabiri na hii marabiri hii ni 70 hii ni 30 that's the reality and it is not within the amount of that ujigonga ah uh-uh. ah it's the reality and who says it is the reality he told Raila I cannot run this country without you but then Raila said then what is your government going to start for we came up with the nine issues that were there including sorting out the issue of electoral justice and the rest they all put in bbi what did the 66 together do they ran around this country saying hard check ni raira anatafutiwa kiti ni uhuru anataka kurudi kwa kiti they are the cause of the mess we are in today now they are overseeing they are arresting of people indiscriminately we are being chased here like rats 
Sahiyat or Kijanong was it was that are you sure you are going to leave the studio f- safe? Are you? See for the, I cannot keep hiding forever. Mm. You must come out. The day I've given you a name. Mm. Amenikubusha, alinikubusha kaniambia she's a young lady and in pibia simu akaniuza. Hii hii kimadhi alipoenda kuipigania Kenya. Weren't there other Kenyans who are looking at him and looking at him like an idiot? How do you fight a msungu? Hauna hauna buduki, hauna nini? That's young person. Mm. In the 20s. And, I, and he to, she told me, then a few of you have that opportunity now. Do it. Just have faith. Go and do it. Others will follow eventually. There are those who are not going to will continue doubting. You've it. said some things that are really profound. But there's something I want to, to allow what he has said. Mm. This finance bill that we was passed was, was there was a condition. Pass it, we give you money. I repeat, 140 billion shillings was given by MF. And Ruto now says he's not borrowing. He has already got a 140. By the way, I have figures here. I can show you. Total amount of money borrowed to date for the last one month, 1.2 trillion. Every country, kidoki dogo iko. 1.2 trillion. He has borrowed more than any other person in the planet Earth in Kenya. Parliament and the role of and Parliament. And the Parliament, it is told. By the way, to me, Kuruhusu, where we are here, that you see the sun, Rakini, you don't need to keep coming back to us. But but this parliament is not behaving any different from the previous parliament that you served. At least the other ones, the other ones they were there was some bit of manners. Where? Some Where? Riro. No. Si jasema hapana gari mimi na macho baya namna hiyo nyinyi wote. You remember I am also so now part of you. I'm not a member of parliament. As, so, as, so, as, so, as a leader, yes, as a leader in that, that parliament. Allow me to say this. For example, let me finish. Wadai himself, mm. Wadai the minority leader has told me hata si Wadai even na Tadi akina Uruoch they are saying he is yet to see mlikuwa nae last year. Hapa hakuna bunge anything that is put on the table there is what is uh, if you want to cut it short the debate is put the question. Put the question is always by the laziest and the most docile member of parliament Who do not want he has no clue of what is being de- debated he is in a hurry to go and uh, make deals and he has he, 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 he had no agenda as to why he was being elected now my question the issue here the chorus in this parliament is put the question to get away i start with it is not different from what we were seeing in the 12th parliament but that does not does, much of a difference. Does that take away my right to con- criticize this? It, no, it does no. not. It yes. does not. It but does I not. think you ought to start by just accepting that you don't have a moral authority to actually criticize. Oh, I do. I do. When you were chair I, of a, you. a critical parliamentary committee, the one on oversight in the implementation of the constitution. CIOC. Right? Yes. All these things that you're talking about, electoral justice and all, some of those proposals are about by IEBC before your committee and the Committee on Justice and Legal Affairs stayed there. For five years, not the not ones that you have, the, one, the ones that were you were very keen on making sure that they get through parliament very fast it last went, year. Went through. Uh, let's amend the political parties act mm-hmm. so that we can create you know new ways of having political parties. Let us shoot down any attempt by the IEBC to control campaign spending mm-hmm. and all. Previous proposals from the IEBC and others came and they just sat there. When you talk about even the kind of debates that we're having in parliament it was the same those who had the majority in parliament would shout down those who had the minority in parliament you want me to say something yes please. i say this one uh, i have said nusumukate we are not interested eh? now if you are talking about nusumukate you cannot have nusumukate with a mchawi <laughs> yes we we belong to the idea either to lead to assist in Wachawi. I'm focusing on so, the 12th parliament. Now we go now to the parliament thing. I was the chairman of CIOC, yes. Constitution Implementation Oversight Committee. Yes. Mm-hmm. My first point of call was Chepkati. I chose to become CIOC chairman, even when those in power, including perhaps the head of state then, was asking me, why don't you become a chairman of a departmental committee? Said I am interested with reforms. Mm. I'm interested with these areas. Mutuli himself, I had a discussion in his, in his office asking me what is CIOC because it had been queued by the previous uh, parliament. Yep. I said, I understand what, why we put it in the constitution. I think we can do something with it. We put all those bills here on the table, including the ones on this uh, Maneno ya constituency boundaries mm-hmm. and how we thought can, it could be sorted out ahead of time before we get into a crisis. Yep. Informal bills. Informal bills. Then what happened? Duare, Muturi, nothing could come on the floor. 
those things you are saying even uh, quite a bit of what was in bbi <laughs> we had already put it in our own bills now they are in power da, they are you they knew what they were doing so this parliament so when Duala was majority leader and muturi was a speaker yes. and all of them working very closely with uhuru kenyatta they the were president. not working closely with uhuru kenyatta i cannot tell you here oh they sabotaged anything that was heading to sort out the issues of justice mm. they were keen on ensuring that uh, go to the hands so the final result just go to the hands that because we are clearing the final result of it is that ibc did not commence the boundary review on time yes we did not have other reforms that were recommended by ibc on electoral justice that you're calling for now we did not have all these other things because muturi and duale sabotaged it because but you had a majority no we did not able to we did not have See, a majority had a majority I'm no. with a handshake the, more than half of jubilee left and became muda and then you had a handshake on your side we had to it. look for rescue mm. so a handshake was rescue yes i mean oh, I have so seen with it the here. rescue you had a majority and what the opposition was these guys they opposed anything that was useful including the fact that we needed to manage covid mm. Mm. why Tell because we were looking for all the reasons to come into power and now do better but unfortunately the better we are seeing yeah. is the killing of people in kisumu the killing of young people hapa mororongo our time is up mshimiwa imekwisha namna gani na huku niruhusu nikwambie ukweli ya kwamba if you need not if you want to see parliament that performed go to 10th parliament go to 8th parliament you will see where and i served in the 10th parliament mm. when i came back to this parliament i was horrified so the uhuru kenyatta 11th and 12th parliament were flops those those parliaments were finished ilikwisha okay. ilikuwa kwa sababu this is the situation room the only way to start your day